Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. He is, of course, the independent who caucuses with the Democrats. Senator Sanders, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good to be with you, Chuck. Let me start with the issue of taxes here, um, uh, since we just ended that with Senator Scott. Uh, I know you're not a fan of this bill at all, okay? I know where you believe the priorities are all wrong. But what should, should the Democratic, has the Democratic Party collectively done enough, you think, in the institutions of the House and the Senate to stop this bill? Well, it's one of the absurdities of this whole process is the Republicans made a decision to go forward without any Democratic Party input. Uh, what they made a decision to do is to operate behind closed doors on an issue that impacts every single American. There was not one public hearing. What this tax bill is about is nothing more than a gift to billionaire campaign contributors to the Republican Party. You have 62 percent of all of the tax benefits going to the top 1 percent, 40 percent going to the top one-tenth of 1 percent. At the end of 10 years, 83 million American middle-class taxpayers will be paying even more in taxes. 13 million people will lose their health insurance, and they're going to run up a deficit of $1.4 trillion. This is not a tax bill designed to help the American people. It is a tax bill designed to help the wealthiest people in this country and the largest corporations. And I'm going to do everything I can to see that it is defeated. I understand that. But what's realistic? I mean, do you, you don't have the votes. Is it trying to find one more well, Republican? But, or, or wh where are you? In this? Right. It's not true. We, uh, you know, Senator Corker has made it clear that it's absurd mm -hmm. that uh, we would run up a deficit of $1.4 trillion. He's right. There are other senators. Senator Rubio has his concern. McCain has his concerns. Collins has her concerns. I would hope that the American people would say that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, where the top one-tenth of one percent owns more wealth than the bottom 90 percent, why would we be giving massive tax breaks to people who don't need it and then cut back on, on programs that middle-class people do need? Now, by the way, yes, one sir. of the ugly aspects of this, Chuck, is, as you well know now, what Paul Ryan is saying is, oh, my goodness, if the deficit goes up by $1.4 as a result of this tax bill, we're going to have to cut back and cut Social Security, Medicare, yeah. Medicaid, and other programs. Tax breaks for billionaires, cuts to Social Security. That is grossly unfair. And please remember what Donald Trump said in his campaign. Yeah. He said, I will not support cuts to Social Security. President I Trump... Keep your right. word. Veto I, that legislature. I believe you bring a poster board of that tw uh, tweet or quote I, down to the Senate floor almost weekly for what it's worth. Um, I want to move on to what happened to one of your colleagues this week when Al Franken decided to resign. I want to play for you something um, that was sort of a common refrain among quite a few conservatives. Here's Newt Gingrich. And what you saw today was a lynch mob. Let's not have due process. Let's not ask anybody any questions. Let's not have any chance to have a hearing. Let's just lynch him. Al Franken wanted the Ethics Committee to take a look first before he made any decisions. Bob Menendez is in the midst of an Ethics Committee probe. Um, why should Bob Menendez be given time in front of the Ethics Committee before you guys as Democrats decide his fate versus Al Franken? Well, Bob Benendez, as you know, underwent a lengthy trial. There was a hung jury. He was not convicted uh, of anything. He, uh, I he think could be retried. Have, he may be retried for what well, it's worth. Well, he, he may be, but that's where we are today. Uh, I think in terms of Al Franken, uh, what you have, and, and Al Franken is a friend of mine and I think has been a very good senator for Minnesota. But what you have is a situation where Senator Franken acknowledged a wrongdoing uh, on several occasions, inappropriate behavior. Uh, and he felt that the appropriate thing to do uh, was to offer his resignation. I think what the absurdity is... He didn't think... I'll be honest with you, you, Senator. Did, did, he didn't sound like somebody who thought it was appropriate. He sounded like somebody who was being forced to resign. He wasn't well, being forced... Well, I don't know that you know what was in Al Franken's Fair mind. Enough. But the point is... The point is that we have the absurdity now of a president of the United States who basically says on a tape that everybody in this country has seen, 
his pride, in a sense, in assaulting women. And he has not apologized for that. And he has, you know, not offered his resignation. So I think that's the absurdity. But I think in terms of what Gingrich was saying, there needs to be a due process. There needs to be a differentiation between somebody who pats somebody on the backside and somebody who commits terrible acts against women. And furthermore, what we need in this country, and this whole debate discussion is bringing this up, we need a cultural revolution. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just famous people who are harassing right. women. There are people all over this right. country, women who are working in restaurants, who are being harassed every single day. We need to change the culture of how we treat women on, on the job. I want to ask you about the issue of impeachment. Here is Tom Steyer. He's a billionaire activist, may run for the U.S. Senate himself in California. He's been running these ads nationwide. Let me play a clip. <laughs> He's brought us to the brink of nuclear war, obstructed justice at the FBI, and in direct violation of the Constitution, He's taken money from foreign governments and threatened to shut down news organizations that report the truth. If that isn't a case for impeaching and removing a dangerous president, then what has our government become? Look, you just established you want him to resign. But the no, U.S. Congress... No, what I Congress, just said... What I no, just, I just, oh, Chuck, uh, Chuck, yeah. what I just said is Al Franken felt it, it, it proper for him to resign. Here you have a president who has been accused by many women of assault, who says on a tape that he assaulted women, he might want to think about doing the same. All right, no, but I, I, understandable. But let me go to this impeachment question here. Um, is Tom Steyer right that it's time to look at that option? There was already a House vote this week. Many Democrats weren't ready to, to, vote, to, to get on that bandwagon yet. Where are you on this issue? I think there is a process that has to uh, be followed. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Mueller is doing a very good job on his investigation. And if Mueller brings forth the clear evidence that there was collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, I think you have grounds for impeachment. But I think jumping the gun does nobody any good. You have to bring the American people onto this issue. You don't want to make it into a partisan issue. If we're going to go forward with impeachment, I want the American people clearly to understand why that is the case, why it makes sense, why it's the right thing to do. I don't think we're there right now. That's what the Mueller investigation is all about. And by okay. the way, I am deeply offended by Republican efforts to try to discredit yeah. Mr. Mueller. When he was FBI director, he was a great guy. Now that he's doing his job here, Republicans don't like him. I think that's really uh, all Very right. unfair. That is an issue we are actually going to be diving into later in this show. Senator Sanders, as always, sir, thank you for coming on and sharing your views. I appreciate it.